Hi, I'm Donald McIntyre, founder of Etherplan, and in this video I'm going to read and comment on my latest article about the ETC price targets. The article is, the logic of why Ethereum Classic will rise to 1,000 in 2021, 8,700 in 2024, and 33,000 in 2029. This is why Ethereum Classic ETC is in a great path. One, the discovery logic. As ETC is discovered by the market, as seen by growth in all metrics in the last eight months, then developers will start discovering its use cases. By the evolution of the metrics in the last eight months, I mean not only price, which went from uh, four to 60, and market capitalization that went to uh, from more or less 500 million to seven, between seven and eight billion, but also the hash rate, so mining is much higher. Also more node operators are, um, are uh, running uh, ETC uh, nodes. Uh, the community is much larger. Um, uh, before we always had between 10 and 20 people on social media, etc. Now there is hundreds or, or, or thousands of, of people following. There is there is uh, groups on Facebook that have uh, thousands of of of, um, of members uh, following ETC there, and Reddit grew enormously. Um, ETC many times is is very high in in um, in, tr in in Twitter trends. Um, then you see other, other, another indication of participation of, of, of people following uh, ETC is that uh, trading volume on exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, um, Binance, OKX, etc. The aggregate trading volume has been in the top five for, for a very long time. That means that there's millions of people and the trading volume is a lot of money is like uh, five to seven billion dollars a day uh, even more than the market cap of ETC sometimes ten billion dollars a day and, and that indicates that there's millions of people who are uh, trading ETC uh, and investing in ETC um, and that also shows on Etherplan. Etherplan is this website is is the most important um, destination for people reading about uh, Ethereum Classic and the traffic has gone has gone more than 100% up more than 100% uh, this year this year it has more traffic than in the previous two years so all the metrics are showing increased interest in ETC and also increased knowledge in ETC for example the narratives that I see uh, not by the OGs of ETC, but by new people, etc. Uh, they already come in and invest in ETC and start talking about it on social media saying ETC is the original Ethereum chain, which is true before we had to always clarify that. Um, and, uh, and a lot of people saying ETC is the base layer proof of work smart contracts platform, which is also true before people didn't distinguish, didn't understand, uh, or uh, distinguishing the difference between Ethereum 2.0 and ETC, people are educated, are, are understanding it. And the other metric is when you go to YouTube, um, uh, there's many more YouTubers uh, talking about ETC, and some of them are even only uh, dedicated, dedicating their channels to uh, to ETC. There's more Discord um, uh, servers uh, dedicated to, to ETC. Uh, and that, this is not only important because there's more participation. It may show that, it's, that, that uh, for many that it's just traders. But the reality is that just as traders and speculators provide liquidity to global financial markets and they are the first and most important uh, um, point um, in liquidity uh, for, for financial markets, those same people that gather on social media and talk about Ethereum Classic and have 
the correct information and do the research in the right places, etc., are the vectors where the information continues to be distributed globally. Uh, uh, and when I say globally also, uh, it is very important to note that ETC is much more global, for example, than Ethereum. Uh, ETC uh, node operators and miners are in more diverse countries than Ethereum. Ethereum is very concentrated in, in Europe and North America and ETC is more spread in Europe, North America, Asia, uh, Latin America, uh, and other places. Uh, this is because ETC has this reputation that it is so secure and immutable, and that is something that is extremely valued in other areas of the world, not only in North America um, and Europe. The diversity of the community also, like I said before, I am Latino, so I am speaking, uh, interacting in Spanish with many more people from Latin America and Spain, sometimes in Portuguese because they are from Portugal or, or Brazil. There's many more black people also participating. I interact with many more black people, Middle Eastern people and also Asian people. Um, and when I mentioned um, I, I, black people, it's not, it's not only African Americans, but also Africans. There, there's, there's a huge community uh, developing in, in Africa, uh, in Bitcoin, for example, Nigeria is the third largest country in the world that uses Bitcoin for transactions. Um, and, um, and there's more evidently, um, the word is also spreading to other blo secure blockchains like ETC there, because uh, many of the people that I interact with uh, on social media are from Africa. So all, all, all these are the metrics um, that are objective um, that indicate ETC's growth. In terms of what are the business development, what are the developers going to discover? Because there's 30 million developers in the world and there must be hundreds of thousands working on, on ETC, uh, hundreds of thousands of millions working on, on Bitcoin. I believe that 100% must be aware of, of these blockchain technologies. Um, and um, they, they are going to start understanding that not all the blockchains are the same and that proof of stake is different than proof of work. And they're going to start to say, okay, I could build things that use Ethereum 2.0 for this, but use Bitcoin for that and then ETC for this other function. And that, is, that, that kind of a distinction is going to, to um, um, to continue evolving as people go discovering and understanding in more detail the blockchain industry. And ETC is clearly not a high volume, high um, performance blockchain, but a lower volume, low performance, but higher value per transaction. So it's like a, a settlements layer and is programmable at the base layer. So I, I, I created this slide that I put here um, that these, these are some of the use cases that people in general organizations and governments are going to discover for ETC, that they're going to find that it is the best for these things um, and, um, and that the others are not so good for that, like the proof of stake chains, which are less secure. Um, and developers, when they see this in the market, they're going to start, they're going to start building applications and decentralized applications in a layered way, no? They, 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 may, they may start in a layer three um, um, scalability system and then go to Cardano or Ethereum 2.0 or DOT and then end up using Bitcoin and ETC at the base layer. In the future, dApps are going to be more complex and they're going to use these, these uh, kinds of organizations to provide the most uh, performance, but at the same time security uh, to their users. So um, I always recommend the ETC army to, to one, tell individuals and families to invest in ETC. One well, this is just for the long-term investment purpose and for financial planning. I think that families should have some of their wealth in ETC for, for future life events, to buy a house in the future, to save for college education for the kids, uh, for retirement, or even for for inheritance for the next generation. Um, 
I tell the ATC army to promote ATC to proof of stake blockchains for anchoring and monetary services. Uh, this is important because um, uh, today the market sees all the chains as the same. You know? Bitcoin and Cardano and Ethereum 2.0, which, which will be proof of stake, or DOT or Litecoin or BCH or ETC, they all see it as the same, competing for the same segments, the same market. So it's, they see it just as a race who is going to win. The reality is that that's not the case. Few are going to compete in a certain uh, segment, which is, which I call the, the, the base layer. And I think that Bitcoin and ETC are going to win there. Uh, others are going to compete in, in layer two, which is for more performance, uh, less security, but more performance. And I think those are the proof of stake chains. And, and, and I see there at least Ethereum 2.0 winning. And then you have Cardano dot EOS, Tezos that are competitors and I don't know how how the other the others are going to fare. Uh, and then you have layer three system like Polygon and Matic that that that, that they that they um, Polygon Matic that they try to um, provide even higher performance on a per sec second basis to layer two uh, and another layer. Um, three system is Chainlink that provides information to introduce information into blockchain so the blockchains are aware of what's happening in the world. Those are, that technology is called oracles. Uh, so the ETC army should go to those systems and start already make, to make them understand your system should be anchored on ETC for security. Your system should be anchored on ETC for sound monetary policy and things like that. So they go understanding the developers of those systems uh, of these of these dynamics uh, tell layer three layer four systems to use ETC as a settlement layer but well, that's that's the, what I just said convince convince governments to use ETC for treasury reserves and large payments so governments central banks uh, supranational organizations corporations in the future they're all going to use they're already using using Bitcoin as the most famous and the most secure one but in the future, they're all going to use Ethereum Classic as well because it's going to be the second uh, most secure one at the base layer. And it's going to be programmable, which is something that is absolutely different than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not programmable, pro pro programmable at the base layer. Um, so it's, Ethereum Classic with Bitcoin are going to have so many use cases that developers are going to start seeing this and all of these segments are going to start using those applications that those developers built um, multinational corporations uh, um, well this this is another thing was that cor cor corporations today large corporations have production in many places of the world have providers in many places of the world and have distribution channels and systems in many places of the world and customers in many places so they're full life cycle, their full distribution, like um, value chain cycles, uh, which has which have many steps and are very complex, are going to be operated through smart contracts at the base layer uh, that will move large amounts of money in few transactions, but according to certain conditions. A simple example that I always give, if someone sells uh, say $10 million of a product to a multinational corporation in another in another country, they can they can um, create a smart contract for that transaction. Uh, normally, the product it ha it takes uh, some time to produce, then to put in a ship, ship it, uh, reach the other port, and then uh, reach the the deposit or warehouse of the of the of the customer. When each of those steps, the smart contract is going to be able to see it. And it's going and it's going to go releasing the cash to the to the seller um, from the buyer as the steps go uh, occurring and according to the, um, the the agreement between the buyer and the seller. Uh, so so for example, when a, when when the boat reaches the port on the destination, that Infor that information is going to be sent to the smart contract. The smart contract is going to release X amount of money to the seller and stuff like that. Uh, and like that, many complex transactions in many industries in many in in many uh, parts of the world. Um, 
And the last that I put here, show, show teams and small businesses that ETC is good to manage their capital, shareholder registries, and uh, high value dApps and services. So, so for example, small businesses that have 50, 100, uh, 1,000 employees, um, first, the, the business itself, the organization, is going to be on the blockchain. The, the, the corporation, uh, even though it could be under the law of, of Delaware or a specific state or a specific country, but the, but the operation of that, of, of that organization is not going to be manual anymore. It's going to be a smart contract, uh, likely on ETC, because it, these are high value um high value digamos, um, kinds of, of things that people want to keep very secure like people keep in a vault their corporate papers and all that and their and their and their court board meetings and minutes and all that they keep them in secure places where now the the blockchain is going to be that secure places place and the shares are going to be on the blockchain so so if, if a small business has two owners for example 50 percent is going to be tokens of that corporation on ETC for one owner, 50% is going to be tokens for the other owner, and the capital is going to be in that smart contract, and all the board decisions are going to be sent to that smart contract, and any sale of shares is going to be a transaction in ETC. Um, so this is by what I hold, and then the registry, uh, what I just said, if, 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 it, if it's a larger corporation and it's public, and it has thousands of, of, uh, of shareholders and they trade in, in, in a decentralized exchange. Even that decentralized exchange can be in, in a layer two system like uh, Ethereum 2.0, Cardano or DOT. Uh, but when uh, at a certain time, when after all the trades are done, the final settlement can go to a registry in ETC and change the ownership of, um, of the shares. Um, and to use high value dApps. Well, no, as many people are going to, to build, many developers are going to build, build high value dApps on ETC or dApps that run in other systems, but they finally, but in the end, settle uh, in ETC. Uh, small businesses as well are going to use these dApps, uh, for example, for managing the value chain, for contracts between providers and the company or between the company and their clients and stuff like that. 1.2. It, the ETC ecosystem will affirm the proof of work POW based Nakamoto consensus and Ethereum Classic's highly secure model and sound monetary policy to ensure its original cypherpunk principles of trust minimization so the market will keep discovering ETC's value and use cases. This is very important. The cypherpunk principles have to be preserved. Uh, it's not because of an ideology uh, thing, uh, but because if you think about it, um, like any other product in the world, you need to have a clear niche that you want to occupy. You need to identify that niche that is very valuable and you have to, your product has to be absolutely uh, created and, and adapted to fit perfectly in that niche. So your product occupies the niche and maximizes uh, the use by the customers and the purchasing by the customers and sales and earnings and everything. But the same happens with the blockchains. Um, if uh, the industry is going to be layered and you're going to have a proof of work base layer, a proof of stake second layer, and then channels on top and many kinds of informational applications in the third layer, and then in the fourth layer, uh, wallets and, and all the interfaces with, with end users, um, and the base layer is uh, more is meant to be more secure, totally decentralized and totally trust minimized because if not, it would not be secure. And for that, it needs the proof of work consensus uh, mechanism because it's the only one, it's the only invention that can assure that thousands of nodes around the world can agree on the state of the network on the last block. Only proof of work provides that uh, kind of uh, consensus mechanism that is as secure a proof of work. Um, and you want to guarantee sound money with a fixed monetary policy. Uh, and you want to guarantee privacy. All these 
uh, what I call cypherpunk values. The cypherpunks are the, are, are the guys that since the 80s were working on how to create all these systems. And finally, a cypherpunk created Bitcoin. So all these systems, including Ethereum Classic, are cypherpunk um, systems and that they have these values, trust minimization, sound money, smart contracts, and privacy. Cypherpunks were, were thinking and building these things since the 80s. In the 90s, it was, I would say, the time when they, when they created all the ideas like smart contracts and digital money and that, and that you could create scarcity on the internet and stuff like that. But it was very difficult to build. And finally, in 2008, 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto could do it. But if, if all this segmentation and niche uh, stuff that I said before uh, makes sense and is logical, then ETC, which we will not be able to compete in the layer two or layer three, uh, because ETC is, um, is not scalable, but it's very secure, uh, where, whereas the, the layer two are more scalable, but less secure, then you have to preserve the values and the structure and the design of ETC to perfectly fit at the base layer. And to perfectly fit at the base layer, if you want to occupy that niche beside Bitcoin and be worth trillions of dollars in the future, you have to be very pure in your principles and how your product, which is ETC, the blockchain, is designed. And for it to be this global base layer, it has to be absolutely trust minimized. That means that you cannot have any gimmick, gadget, or thing that makes it less secure. It has to be as secure as humans and technology can produce. It has to be, for that, it has to be proof of work because it's, it's the most secure and most, um, it provides the most assurance in terms of global consensus every 15 uh, seconds. And it has to be absolutely sound in terms of supply, in, in, in terms of monetary policy. People cannot have the uncertainty that Vitalik or the developers or Charles Hoskinson is going to change the monetary policy of their systems in the future. ETC has, has to provide absolute certainty. And for that, it has to have an algorithmic fixed monetary policy. There's no other way if you want to occupy that niche. If you want to, to, to and you have to forget about scalability and throughput and all, to, uh, because that's not the value of ETC. The value of ETC is not that we can uh, process millions of transactions per second. That's the value of the others. That's the value of the competitors and they went that direction and ETC is not gonna compete there. ETC's uh, value is that each transaction is absolutely secure. It doesn't matter uh, if, if the fee is zero or $5 or $50 or $1,000. Um, what matters is that when you're moving a billion dollars through ETC, you know for a fact that after X uh, confirmations, that transaction is final and is never going to be reversed in the history of humanity. The same, the same with smart contracts. When you if you're if you're going to have dApps that are for highly secure transactions for for governments to have their reserves and to do deals between governments uh, with smart contracts and stuff like that, or large corporations or supranational organizations like the IMF or the UN is going to give a country some grant for something, and but but it has conditions, so they put it in a smart contract. Uh, they have to be absolutely sure that that smart co contract is not going to be modified by Charles Hoskinson or Vitalik or the core dev or, or, or Zuko and Zcash or, or, um, or any, any treasury managed uh, thing. Uh, they, have to, they have to know that after X confirmations, that smart contract is going to be immutable forever in the history of humanity. If not, it doesn't work. And that philosophy is cypherpunk, that philosophy is Bitcoin, and that philosophy has to be Ethereum Classic because it is the same as Bitcoin, but programmable uh, at the base layer. Um, so if you want to occupy that niche and be really valuable and worth trillions of dollars in the future, you need to follow these principles. But And to follow these principles is not just to say them and then do whatever, no. If you're going to say, yes, ETC is trust minimized and ETC's code is law 
and you say it verbally and etc you have to act accordingly therefore you cannot introduce you cannot say oh yes etc's code is law etc is immutable etc is cypherpunk and trust minimization and then propose changes like like the treasury which are clearly centralizing or propose changes like uh, checkpointing or sharding proof of work all those things you cannot do if you're saying the other thing it's like you have two personalities if you do this uh, so again because etc is always going to have these principles then the community is always going to act accordingly and any bad change is going to be rejected and all the the changes and upgrades that uh, affirm these principles are going to be welcome to do this the ecosystem will follow a highly secure and conservative technical roadmap it will add technologies that will make its mining algorithm more efficient and secure enable full interconnectivity with other base layer and layer 2 system ah, yeah, i forgot that interconnectivity uh, like fly client etc so that in transactions and money go flows between all the chains including etc that's it, 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 seamlessly that's uh, extremely important ensure backward com compatibility of smart contracts in all future upgrades uh, sometimes uh, when we did uh, in upgrades uh, digamos, uh, inheriting ethereum's technology which all evm chains have to do because the evm the ethereum virtual machine standard which is higher than ethereum but everybody has to use that uh, sometimes some of those changes broke past smart contracts and that cannot happen if you have an inheritance smart contract that that maybe you'll die in 30 years or four or 40 years and you put there and you put your money if it's broken in a future upgrade then it, it's worthless it doesn't it, 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 you cannot use a system for that uh, but to use a system for that there are backward compatibility uh, technologies and etc is going to integrate that to guarantee that uh, reduce bloat that is for the blockchain to be smaller and then and more people can run nodes um, uh, and, and increase node count in the process the etc uh, community will reject technologies that risk centralization or undermine the full capacity of nakamoto consensus these include the proposed treasury checkpoint and sharded proof of work and eventually eliminating mess uh, so this is the slide that i did for for this technical roadmap before i had the treasury because i had proposed a smaller tax and a limited in time treasury but now i changed my mind and i think that a treasury is centralizing and I even a minimal centralizing change has to be cancelled uh, so i am going to continue working to reject the treasury um, <clears throat> uh, these SHA-3 has to be done. Fly client is the one for interconnectivity. Account versioning is for backward compatibility. Uh, permanently fixing the gas limit. This is also to, to fix the block size so it remains small because if not, it continues growing all the time. And this sixth one, eliminating ch uh, checkpointing and mess. Well, checkpointing doesn't exist in ETC. I'm, we are going to reject it uh, because of what I said. So I have to cross it out here. Uh, but mess, mess is basically a system that that is keeping etc from being attacked today uh, because um, whenever there is an attacking chain uh, communicated to the nodes in the network the nodes of the network demand for that new chain to have exponentially more work done to be able to accept it if not we continue in the same if not we continue in the same chain uh, that uh, it's excellent uh, to protect a small chain like was ETC in the past, but as as we grow and this and ETC is worth a hundred billion dollars, then a trillion dollars, and then five trillion dollars, and finally six trillion dollars in in eight years in the in the next two cycles, uh, this is going to be absolutely unnecessary, and we have to eliminate that feature because we have to go back to pure Nakamoto consensus. Nakamoto consensus is exactly the same that I said. But when, a, when an attacking chain comes, you just accept it. Why? Because it's the only way to have global consensus, which is a key, uh, a key uh, feature of, of, of proof of work blockchains. In the case of Bitcoin, it's so big, uh, Bitcoin can perfectly be attacked. So we have this chain and then an attacker can send a new chain 
with modified transactions. And today Bitcoin has that and they have to accept it. So in theory, Bitcoin could be reorganized and also Ethereum and, and Bcash and Litecoin. That's how Nakamoto consensus works up to a 50% protection. So this means that this guy that attacks you is not that it's free. Uh, they, they need to have at least 50% of the computing power of the global network. And this is why those chains have never been attacked because B B ETC was smaller before it was attacked a couple of times. So we created mess. We, uh, the, the people of ETC labs, a very well integrated mess to protect ETC while it's small. Uh, but to maintain the purity and the concept of Nakamoto consensus and the guarantees of security of Nakamoto consensus, eventually we need to eliminate mess. So that's what I mean here. Uh, 1.3, the same process of discovery mentioned above happened in Bitcoin and the internet in general. Fortunately, I was alive uh, when these things happened. For example, in 1994, Google, Netflix, and Facebook did not exist, but as time passed, the technology evolved, new use cases were discovered and built by startups and developers. In the case of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is already 12 years old and only now institutions, corporations, and governments are discovering its use cases to the point that the US government, in a huge bill, there was a huge fight of how to regulate crypto. So we are already in a, in a point where crypto is an established technology, is the future. And even the US government has started to fully regulate it, uh, indicating that it's an established technology and it's here to stay for, for the future. But what I mean here in this point is that in 1994, 95, I was using Yahoo when I was buying with credit card some things on Office Max, for example. Uh, and we never imagined that something like Google would exist uh, with all, in, uh, see, uh, I mean, Google today, you, you, you press any word and it's incredible how it brings searches the whole world and, and it brings you exactly what you're looking for. I mean, that kind of technology is incredible. Netflix that we were going to be watching TV on your computer or even the iPhone. I mean, in, in those days that we were going to be watching Netflix in my phone and, and, and Today, 70% of activity occur in, 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 in these computers, in these phones, and 30% in, in, in laptops uh, or other computers, desk, desktops, uh, like this one that I'm using. Uh, so we couldn't even imagine. So it's not that a technology is invented and everybody start, starts building. No, the technology is invented. First, it was used for email, the internet. Then it was discovered for for Yahoo and news, oh, let's send photographs and then for more and then for social media. Social media was a total revolution. It was called Internet 2.0. Uh, and then mo the mobile revolution, uh, it came after uh, Steve Jobs invented the iPhone 2007. Uh, and now we have the blockchain and, and the internet today is, is practically where we run our lives no, and everything is going to be on the internet and everything that is smart contracts and money within the internet is going to be in technologies like bitcoin and this is why it takes a while i, I put this here this this s curve which is the way it it happens now you start here and all these years uh people are discovering it etc and and we are more or less here in terms of blockchain and in an ETC uh, and in the future, in this process, it's going to go to trillions of dollars, uh, both Bitcoin and, and ETC and Ethereum and Cardano and DOT, they're all going to go to trillions of dollars. And people are going to discover developers and, and market and users and providers and startups are going to discover that, oh, these things are for different things. It's not that we have to do everything on Ethereum. It's not that we have to do everything in Bitcoin like the maximalist, no. You are going to do some things on layer two proof POS. You're going to do other things on layer on base layer uh, proof of work. You're going to do other things on the third layer, and and the fourth layer, which is the interfaces, the wallets, and the and the retail providers uh, or the end user providers, because it's going to be retail, enterprise, government. They're all going to use that fourth layer, which which are going to be the interfaces. Uh, those guys are also going to do cross sale. 
and and um, machine learning and provide amazing services that we today we haven't even imagined and this this is this is what's going to happen in this discovery process with uh, etc one of my my second big point is the positioning logic okay so etc is incredibly currently now objectively this is not an idea a hypothetical this is a real etc uh, is in a very unique position in the blockchain industry it is the sixth largest proof of work blockchain in the world people don't don't do these distinctions if you if you go to a list in misari.io and and you look only for proof of work blockchains you're going to see that there are very few large proof of work blockchains and these are the base layer bitcoin ethereum one that is going to disappear in six to twelve months and it's going to go to ethereum two dogecoin is proof of work bitcoin cash litecoin and oh ethereum classic is the sixth largest proof of work blockchain in the world and when ethereum and these are not all these others are not uh, programmable when ethereum migrates and disappears from the proof of work segment and goes to proof, proof of stake as ethereum 2.0 oh lo and behold etc even if it stays here it's going to be fifth largest but it's going to be the largest smart contracts platform in the world this positioning is incredibly valuable however it is an inexorable reality that when ethereum 1.0 uh, uh, 1 migrates to ethereum 2.0 then etc uh, will become the largest proof of work fixed monetary policy programmable blockchain in the world when I, what I just said um, this is another list which is the list of only smart contracts blockchains, regardless whether they are POS or POS and, oh lo and behold ETC currently objectively is the sixth largest uh, smart contracts platform and again uh, when it migrates it's going to be the largest smart contracts uh, uh, platform that is proof of work and fixed monetary policy um, and I put this arrow here because I think that ETC is going to go up uh, in value significantly when Ethereum migrates to Ethereum 2.0 because there's not going to be another there's not going to be a big um, uh, proof of work smart contract platform in the world so that is a hypothetical, but I think that ETC is going to go up. And in, in, this, in this case of the first one, in the proof of work, it is going to go up because all these are just a coin that compete with, with Bitcoin. They don't do anything else. They're nothing. They're just a coin. This is the real coin. Uh, so when Ethereum moves, I really think that Ethereum Classic is going to move to number two because these guys they don't do anything useful and etc is as secure it has the same quality coin as bitcoin and is programmable at the base layer bitcoin is not programmable here bitcoin is programmable when you put la layers on top like lightning network or rsk which is a smart contracts blockchain that works on bitcoin and other system and liquid from uh, um from one of that company Li liquid uh, is another chain that is programmable that works on bitcoin so it's programmable up here but it's not programmable at the base layer etc is going to pr be programmable up here because these systems are also going to connect to etc but it's also programmable at the base layer and that increases its versatility enormously and it's going to be used very useful uh, for developers in the future not only that but etc is in a really distinct niche totally different than all the other large blockchain systems in the world all the other chains are either proof of work but not programmable like i said before uh, i.e due to their utxo transaction model bitcoin and the other proof of work chains cannot be programmable at the base layer but only through layer two systems like i said before or programmable but with the proof of stake pos consensus mechanism which is known to be more scalable like I said before, but less secure than proof of work. So this chart, I've been using it since 2018. It is the clear positioning for ETC. This is where I see, where I see that where, where you have to find, where I say before, you have to find your niche and you have to be a savage, like obsessive person 
fitting that niche as better as possible so that you can maximize your value the, and when the market discovers you, uh, you're going to take off. ETC, when I started to do these charts in 2018, 2019, it was worth like half uh, $500 million, $600 million. And now it's $7.61 billion when I, when I put this here. And it's alone. There's no other chain there. No, uh, there's other chains that are smart contracts and proof of work, but there are number 800, number 200 are, are, are very small and they don't have a chance. ETC is large, known, hyper liquid in the market, hyper secure, has higher, has high hash rate, has a, already a, a market cap of, of seven to eight billion dollars. It's growing, the community is growing and it's there alone in that niche. It is incredible, an incredible opportunity and this is just a matter of discovery. It's not that ATC has to do something different. No, 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 ATC is absolutely the best technology in smart contracts because it's up to date with Ethereum. Um, and it's and it's always going to be up to date with EVM standard. And it's just there and it's only a matter of discovery. If the ETC army and everybody that participates in ETC continues telling people on social media and everywhere, uh, do let's do meetups, let's do all these things and continue communicating this, we're going to increase this awareness and ETC is going to take off and more stuff is going to be built there. Um, people are going to understand that code is law means basic rights globally, like property, uh, freedom of contract, um, business between people, uh, sound money, uh, that, that there is immutability, all those things that are basic rights, privacy, uh, privacy, uh, for example, ATC already integrated CK Snarks, which is the privacy technology of Zcash. So in the future, you can build uh, dApps that have privacy. Uh, so this is global. This is big. Code is law means basic rights on a global scale. Totally trust minimized, totally mutable, totally guaranteed that it's going to be secure. Um, and when when ETC reaches that that point of recognition, is going to take off in a in in a way that we have never seen uh, before. And you can see here that clearly all the the big proof of work blockchains are all uh, not programmable, and all the big uh, proof of stake blockchains are not uh, proof of work and not as secure. And even though they say that they have fixed monetary policy or the issues is one, etc., that's that's all subjective. I mean, proof of stake blockchains are managed by stakers. These stakers in the future are going to be banks, corporations, etc. They're all identifiable. Governments are going to tell them what to do, just like governments tell banks what to do today. So, so, so they're not as secure. They're, they're a very good invention because they're scalable. They're distributed technologies. They're going to be have many efficiencies. But they're going to be regulated. They're going, their monetary policies are going to be changed. But it's just a, it's just a voting between people. Um, uh, so any system that is managed subjectively, like a proof of stake system, doesn't have fixed monetary policy. But again, it has the benefits that clearly ETC doesn't have and Bitcoin doesn't have is that they provide enormous amounts of uh, transactions per second. So it makes them available for the world at large for high volume things like um, high frequency trading, uh, tra day trading, uh, buying small value NFTs for people playing games and all that video, everything's gonna be there, not at the base layer. Uh, but because these use cases are so different and so valuable each niche for their own reasons, imagine, look at this, in, in the programmable proof of work um, uh, niche, there's nobody except ETC. This is incredibly valuable. This is why I, I, I am so excited about ETC and I moved all my wealth to ETC. To recap, there are two great external opportunities that will enable ETC to grow exponentially. One, Ethereum 1, Ethereum 1 is going to migrate to Ethereum 2 and 2 as Bitcoin and the other proof of work blockchains are not programmable at the base layer due, due to their UTXO model, please Google UTXO mo model to understand. Basically, all uh, what Vitalik Buterin invented is the state machine, so that makes it programmable. 
the UTXO model doesn't have a state. It, it just uh, it's a, a, an ongoing stream of transactions, one on top of the other. So when I when A moved one Bitcoin to B, then you have the two transactions, and 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 you see that uh, the way to know that B owns that Bitcoin is because you see the history of the two transactions. When B moved the, the one Bitcoin to C, then you have the ter third transaction on top and like that successively. So the way to, to know that your account owns Bitcoin is because your node or your service provider goes to the blockchain and they can verify that there's a long chain of transactions that end in your account with one Bitcoin. That kind of system, which is not a state system, the state system of, of smart contract blockchain that Vitalik invented, basically what they do is they enter a transaction where they debit one account and they credit the other account. And then you can forget the information because the, yeah, this account has the credit. Um, that is called doubled entry accounting. The UTXO model is triple entry accounting, which, which you can Google. Uh, so that's the technical reason why um, those blockchains are not gonna be programmable and ETC will be much more versatile and useful at the base layer than all the other proof of work chains. So here you can see this layered uh, vision that I have for the blockchain industry that I mentioned before, now the layer one. And ETC is gonna move more or less from here to be the second largest for all the reasons that I said. And you can see here that uh, Lightning Network Liquid, uh, Liquid is created by Blockstream, that's the company. RSK, they all work, these two, all these work on Bitcoin. Then Ethereum, uh, BNB chain that has the BSC, the smart contracts uh, platform, ADA, DOT, and EOS, etc. All other, all those are going to work on Bitcoin, Ethereum Classic, Dogecoin, etc. But Ethereum Classic is going to be especially valuable because it's programmable at the base layer. And layer three is going to be all these things, stable coins and compound and, and stuff like that and oracles and all that. And then you have the exchanges, the centralized exchanges, the wallets, and all that is going to be the interfaces to the public, uh, the, the layer four. Mm, as seen in the table above, when the whole blockchain industry becomes fully layered, ETC will move, to sur uh, will move to surpass the other proof of work chains at the base layer or layer one and become the largest proof of work smart contracts platforms in the world the second largest proof of work blockchain in the world. So it's not only the, the it's not going to be the large number one in the world in terms of proof of work and smart contracts, but it's going to be the second largest only as a proof of work blockchain. So it's gonna be huge. Three, um, so this is the price prediction logic. Why do I say 1000? Why do I say 8,700? Why do I say 33,000. As Bitcoin is digital gold and ETC is programmable digital gold because they both have the same monetary policy. For example, Bit Bitcoin has a hard cap of, 20, of 21 million and ETC has a hard cap of 210 million. We purposely did it to copy that 21 thing um, so that it's easy to understand and both decrease um, uh, steadily, uh, logarithmically, logarithmically, uh, so that the the supply gets smaller in the future and it's eventually going to diminish. Uh, so they have the same monetary policy. Um, so because of this, the best analogy for predicting their price is the market capitalization of gold. If 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 Bitcoin is digital gold and Ethereum Classic is programmable digital gold then we have to see at goal to see what it did in the last 7,000 years. And these systems are going to match that, the value of gold. Um, this, is, this is the table. It's, it has a lot of information, so I'm not going to go in detail. In other videos, it was explained, but this is the market capitalization, capitalization in gold in these five cycles uh, of the crypto market. Um, the crypto market goes normally has rallies every four years because Bitcoin, which is the leading chain, has the, the this, this step down called the halvening uh, of their supply 
every four years. So in it happened in 2013, it happened in 2017. Now it's happening as we speak. We are in the middle of a cycle. Uh, and, it, and gold was $6 trillion before, and today is more or less $9.5 trillion. And because of inflation in four years and the next cycle is going to be around $10 trillion and in 2029 alone, around uh, $11 trillion. I'm using more or less a 2% future inflation, retail inflation for gold to, to go inflating in the future. So if, go, if Bitcoin is going to eventually match the value of, of, um, of gold, then it's going to be in 2021, I estimate, you can read my report about this with the details. I estimate that Bitcoin is going to be end up being 25% in this current cycle in 2021 of gold. And that implies a value of $125,000. So if, if Bitcoin is trading today at 44,000 and it's only four months until the end of 2021, why, am I, why do I think this crazy number is going to be reached? Because it's exactly what happened in 2013 and 2017. Bitcoin in this point of the cycle still had a long way to go and it reached 1250 in, 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 in 2013 and 20,000 in 2017 from similar numbers in terms of percentages as we are today, 44. So 44,000 to 125,000 is more or less three, three times. Uh, and that is very easy to do from now until the end of the year. Not because I am imagining because I am crazy dude, but on top of because I'm imagining it and I am, I, am, I am a crazy dude, it did happen objectively in the past. So it's not crazy really. Um, and, um, and I think it's going to happen because the way central banks are printing money is incredible and it, and it just fuels all of this. All that money that is being printed, some of it goes to crypto inexorably. In 2025, if we project these values and these trends, then Bitcoin is going to be 50% of gold. And that is going to imply $259,000 per Bitcoin. And it's going to be 100% by the end of this decade of gold, easily, if not before. And that implies $550,000 for, for uh, Bitcoin per Bitcoin. In the case of Ethereum Classic, it has this history similar as Bitcoin, as Bitcoin. And because of the reason that I said before that Ethereum, Ethereum 2.0 is going to be proof of stake and Ethereum 1 is going to disappear. And because everybody's going to see, okay, the next one is ETC and it's already up there. Uh, and because, the, because of this dis discovery, people are going to say, wait, we have Dogecoin Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin are bigger than ETC, but ETC is fully programmable, as secure, and its monetary policy is equally secure and sound. Well, not, ETC has to be worth much more and is going to go and surpass those three chains at the base layer and the proof of work uh, segment. So this, once it does that, it has to be worth around $1,000 because to surpass those chains, it has to be, um, around 132 billion dollars um if it's true that the people that the market is going to do this discovery which i think is absolutely obvious um uh, so it is it's going to be worth at that time around 5.58 percent of bit of bitcoin but i think that it it's going to eventually go to at least 50 percent of bitcoin if not more uh but in the midpoint it's going to be around 25 uh, percent so it's that is what what is at, at the supply that at that point uh, it's going to imply 8,700. And when it reaches 50% of the value of Bitcoin and because, because Bitcoin is going to be 100% of the value of gold. So all this depends on, on Bitcoin being real digital gold, which I think it is, and even better. Uh, when ETC is 50%, it's going to imply at the supply at that time, 33, $33,800 per ETC. Um, so this is the logic of the price targets. I am extremely confident. I don't see any of my assumptions that is not happening as I see them evolving uh, as, as we speak. 
people don't see these things. Uh, many people don't see these things. I don't think that I am a magician or anything like that. It's just I have experience. I've been a banker. I lived the whole internet thing. I I was trained by my friend Nick Sabo. He is the major figure inventing all these technologies. He's been since the late 80s with Tim May, who I met and we've been fr we had been friends for three or four years until he died and uh, may he rest in peace um, with Dick Sabo. Then he's the guy that invented all this shit. He was mentored by Tim May and I would believe that I am mentored by Nick Sabo. Um, <clears throat> and he is so intelligent. He, he has um, uh, taught me uh, how all this shit works. What, what are the true cypherpunk principles? Get all the fiat thinking from your mind, all your traditional thinking, central banking thinking, political thinking, get it off your mind. And once you do that and you learn from someone like Nick Sabo, <clears throat> uh, I wrote an article about that, you should Google it. Um, you understand and you see things that other people don't see. That's why I see that you cannot do a treasury, you cannot do sharded proof of work, you, know, you cannot experiment, you cannot play with Bitcoin or Ethereum Classic. You have to be focused and go to your niche and make sure that this is a globally trust minimized, absolutely mutable and code is law chain. Uh, so I was saying this segment, uh, I see all these trends uh, and they are already happening. It's not that they're in my imagination or other people's imagination. They're not hypotheticals. These trends are occurring. Um, so here I explain as gold inflates in price into the future due to lack central bank monetary policies, it will likely reach a valuation of at least 11 trillions by 2029. It is very likely that BTC will rise uh, to 125,000. I already said that. Then ETC will rally uh, from the current 60 um, to, to 1,000 in 2021. Um, because Bitcoin and Ethereum usually lead because a lot of people see, oh, but Bitcoin is going up, Ethereum is going up, ETC is not going up, oh, I'm gonna die. No, it, sometimes ETC does like this and then the others go. And sometimes the others go first because they're the big cap known chains. And then people say, oh, wait, but ETC is left behind. And then boom, in, in very few days, it goes up and it catches up. Um, then Ethereum will migrate to Ethereum 2.0. That's a that's a major event in Ethereum in Ethereum's life, uh, in Ethereum Classic's life, um, and it's going to happen according to Vitalik and the developers either by December of 2029 or a few months after December of of 20. Let's say the first half of 2022. As we get closer to that, people are going to start realizing, wait, and what's going to be at the base layer, which is going to be the proof of work smart contract. There has to be one in the world. If not, uh, all those services, even that Ethereum one proved that they are useful, are going to be gone. Somebody has to, to occupy that niche. And that niche is already going to, it already exists that the product is ETC and it's going to be occupied by ETC. It will surpass Doge, BCH, because it is much more versatile. Okay, I already said that. Hmm. In the future, crypto bull market rallies. Um, I'm just highlighting this so, so you know where I'm reading. Uh, rallies of 2025 and 2029, uh, Bitcoin will likely reach 50%, 100% valuation. I already said that. This will put it at around 259 or half a million dollars. I already said that because ETC will rise to be the largest proof of work smart contracts blockchain in the world and the second largest proof of work network at the base layer beside Bitcoin. Then it will likely reach a valuation of 25 and 50% relatively uh, to Bitcoin in the next crypto bull market cycles of 2025 and 2029. The above will, will put ETC at around $8,700 in 2025, crypto bull market cycle and $33,000 by 2029. This remains, ah uh, yes, th this is the last concept I wanted to say. This remains a conservative assessment because ETC is actually 
more versatile, programmable, and useful than Bitcoin itself. So Bitcoin is digital gold and ETC is programmable digital gold. So it is entirely possible that it could reach the same valuation or even surpass it eventually. Thank you very much.